if you're not able to see my PowerPoint slides or not able to see anything on your screen. So uh, last lecture, we have gone through one dimensional finite element formulation. We just go through six steps, set steps. So step one, element type. Step two, choose the function, temperature function. Step three, uh, choose the, uh, go and find the temperature gradient. It is the G matrix. And then heat flux matrix. Okay. Then after that, you focus on the uh, conduction matrix and then all the related equation. Okay. Then step number five, six, seven will be the same. I mean, you go and find the unknown, the remaining unknown in the matrix. So last lecture, we go through uh, one tutorial question. Okay. So this tutorial question, uh, if you're not sure, go through the PowerPoint slides. Uh, I have prepared a few more tutorial question. We did this one, this one, uh, this one, three tutorial question. So we will come back to these three tutorial question if you have time today. So uh, if, you're, if you do not have time today, then I'll expect you to go and go through the PowerPoint slides after this. Yeah, uh, all the answer is there. All the step is there, and uh, you can come and uh, see me uh, if you're not sure on the steps. Yeah, so but before the final exam. Yeah, before the final exam. Okay, today we're going to learn a new things, which is called uh, two dimensional. So just now I show you the first uh, one dimensional. Today we're going to look at two dimensional. Okay, somebody text me. Let me see. Okay. Uh, Katana, you cannot hear me? Katana, you need to restart your team. Huh? Change my text. Okay, let's back to our lecture. So today we're going to look at uh, two-dimensional finite element formulation. So you still apply the same steps, yeah. So first one, choose the element type. But in this case, we already we will be using the famous triangular element. So if you use uh, ANSYS, this is the most famous uh, element type that. Uh, when you run a two-dimensional analysis um, in your simulation. So today we're going to look at a two-dimensional finite element using a tri triangular shape uh, during the solution or discretization or in the ANSYS we call it meshing, right? So today we're going to choose triangular and pay a little bit more attention for element type that we choose so uh, focus on the screen that you see on the on the on the screen here. So uh, we will choose point from uh, one of the point here. Uh, let's say we choose the point on the lower left corner I, and then we label the next point anti-clockwise. Yeah, we always apply anti-clockwise uh, notation. Meaning we start with I, J, and M. So we always start with anti-clockwise direction. Okay, anti-clockwise direction, no matter how the orientation of the triangular. So later I will explain more about this one. But for this morning, what you need to uh, take note for two-dimensional finite element, when you come to choose the triangular shape, uh, the note or the location of point we choose based on anti-clockwise direction. Okay, anti-clockwise direction. Let me check uh, Katana is it here. 
Katana, are you here? Are you able to hear me? Katana, are you able to hear me? Yes, uh, I'm using the phone. I think my laptop has issues. All right, okay, good, great. Okay, so again, uh, um, uh, just side note, uh, so there will be one question from this section. So just pay a little bit more attention. So you will have uh, IJM, so point one, point two, and point three. However, we will uh, just to separate with what you learned in the previous chapter, we will change the notation to I, J, and M, uh, specifically for chapter seven. But the concepts still stay, uh, one, two, and three note. So, but in this chapter, we change the notation to I, J, and M, just to separate uh, thermodynamics uh, transfer, heat transfer. So we will use I, J, and M in anticlockwise and recall what you learned in your Cartesian plane. So each one of the coordinate will give you, uh, each one of the point will give you a coordinate. For example, the first point, you have your X coordinate and Y coordinate. Uh, Z also same, Z coordinate, X and Z, uh, X and Y. And also your M also have X and Y. Okay, so first, first what you need to take note this morning, again, label your point anticlockwise. I, J, and M in anticlockwise, and then uh, label the coordinate, coordinate of the point X, Y. So for example, if it's the first point, you label as X, I, Y, I. Second point, X, J, Y, J. Third point, X, M, Y, M. So this is all this uh, coordinate system. Um, then after that, uh, each point will have its own temperature. So you label as uh, small t i for point i, small t t j sub j means temperature at point j, t m means the point at temperature uh, for point m. So this is the uh, the fundamental shape when we talk about two dimensional finite element analysis for thermal uh, for heat transfer. Okay, so also, also apply when you use uh, ANSYS in your simulation software. Uh, if you analyze the 2D dimension, this is the fundamental steps. These are the steps. Eh? Okay, first, you, you, first step when you analyze two-dimensional, you choose triangular shape and then you label the node. Step two, you develop the temperature fu function, like what you did for uh, in the previous section, one-dimensional, it will be the same. So your T equal to NT or F uh, means uh, capital T equal to shape function times the displacement. So you still the same. It's only that you combine all the point temperature together. So T equal to uh, N times the T. Here is the displacement, right? So, and then you have a formula for your N. Okay, you have a formula for your N. So given by on this screen. So uh, again, I don't expect you to memorize, but at least you have all this information uh, beside you when you try to solve this all this question. All right. So for example, T equal to when you see capital T means you are looking at the the global scale means it at the you look at all the all the temperature. Huh? So uh, at the global scale, capital T. So the shape function given by capital NI equal to 1 over 2A, and A here is the area of the triangular. Okay, A is the uh, uh, area of the triangular. Alpha I plus beta I X plus gamma I. So uh, what is uh, important here is that if your N is I, means the first point, you refer to the first point, if you see a sub i means you refer to the first point. So all the alpha, beta, and gamma is referring to i, alpha i. Okay. Uh, okay. The rest you can read from here. So it will be same uh, if it become n j. If you want to calculate n j, then this one become alpha j, beta j, gamma j. If you want to calculate what is nm, so just nm and then all the sub here become m, 
alpha m, beta m, and gamma m. So what is alpha, beta, gamma already covered in the previous chapter? So there is a nine equation. There's a slide on the nine equation on alpha, beta, and gamma. So you need to find out all, all, all information is there already. You just apply the equation. Step three, you write the temperature gradient equal to this one. Okay, I'm not going to go deep into this one. We will, we will show you the, the application of this one in the tutorial just shortly yeah, after I explain about the, all these steps. So we apply all these things. Then you will get your temperature gradient G equal to BT. B is given by this matrix. Right, B, T, B equal to 1 over 2A, and then you have two rows of uh, constant value here, beta and gamma. So this one also given in the previous slides. So you just go and ad adopt the calculation. Uh, and then you find the heat flux. Heat flux equal to Q, a small Q equal to minus DG. So you can write the, the, the your Q equal to minus dBT. You sub this blue color equation into here. And what is D? D is your KY, uh, KXX and KYY. Yeah? KXX and KYY. So these two values will be given. So you just substitute inside here. You find your heat flux over temperature. So you have two. Lah. One is for your X direction. One is for your Y direction. QX and QY. Why we have two QX and QY in this section? Because now we are looking at two dimensional. We have two dimensional final element. So previously we only have one, one dimension. So this side we only have one Q. Today we look at two dimensional. So we have two QX and QY. And also here we also have a KXX and KYY. Then you continue to solve for the element matrix based on the equation that we see last in last uh, tutorial question. So there are few equations. So this one is the most standard one. Uh, if you see the K sub C means con conduction process. So conduction process give you this equation. Again, you don't need to memorize it, but at least you should put this equation somewhere. And if you need to use it, then uh, you just copy and then you put in your answer sheet. Then you'll get marks for this one, right? Okay. So in short, your KC will be three integration of your volume. Means the one integration line means one dimension. So if you integrate your X, Y, and Z dimension, you will get volume. Okay, you will get volume. So B transpose D matrix B matrix. So this one, uh, I already show you how to use the online uh, matrix uh, calculator. So go ahead and uh, practice on the online uh, online calculator. It will help you uh, to cut short your final uh, final exam time uh, in, the, in the solution. If not, you need to spend time solving the four simultaneous equation or even five uh, simultaneous equation. So in short, uh, if you want to calculate the KC for two-dimensional, uh, means conduction uh, stiffness matrix, you just use this equation. T is a thickness, uh, uh, is a thickness of the subject. A is the area. B is the matrix, B matrix, uh, D matrix, and B matrix. T means transpose. Yeah? We will look at this equation uh, later on and so on. If you have a convection, you are given by this equation, KH equal to this one. So it, it, it looks like a, a bit complex, but uh, the equation is there, right? It's available. Just, just look at the question. If you need to use KH, just flip to these slides and then copy this one, and then you calculate all the value there. Uh, or in short, you just having this one, yeah? KH equal to H is the constant, uh, convection constant value. LI minus J means the length of the element, the angle, length of the element. T is the, uh, T is the, the, 
uh, sorry, T is the temperature, not thickness. Huh? T is the temperature uh, divided by 6211200. So this is uh, standard only. What you need to do is you just substitute H, substitute your L, substitute the temperature given. Then you're able to find your convection. Same with uh, the conduction just now. So conduction, you just substitute the temperature times area, calculate the B matrix, D matrix, then you're able to find the conduction uh, matrix. So there are two metrics for thermal, uh, for heat transfer chapter. So this one, we will consider convection at one side, heat loss at, uh, at one side of the corner there. Then we use this equation. Okay, if insulated, then we don't need to use this one. Okay, if insulated, means no heat transfer come out from the other corner, then you don't need to find. You only need to find one, one corner that open up that uh, your, your energy is lost. Then you use this equation. Okay. Um, another one is your, uh, after you find your matrix, then you need to solve for your force, force inside the thermal dynamic transfer. But the force here is not in Newton, but it's in Watt. Huh? It's in Watt, W-A-T-T, Watt. Huh? It's in Watt, so given by all this equation. Right? So if you need to find the force because of the, uh, the Q, capital Q is the heat uh, transfer in the volume, per unit volume, then you use this equation. QV divided by 3, 1, 1, 1. Okay. So V, you take area times the, uh, sorry, V, area times the thickness. Okay, this is the V here. Okay. So we will look at the example. If you need to find a small Q uh, forces, then you use this equation. Q star LT minus T divided by 2, 1, 1, 0. On the side of IJ, meaning this one, IJ, this one. If you need to use the, if, if you need to calculate JM, then, then you need to use the trigonometry uh, calculation because you have two coordinate here. You just use the, use the coordinate uh, method to find the length between these two points. Then you substitute inside. Okay, same with this one. If it's JM, so you just substitute lah, J minus M here. And if it's in the side of MJ, then you just substitute this one. Okay, all right. So lots of equation today, but all are standard equation. All right. We will look at uh, more important is the tutorial later on. The third kind of force that we will need to calculate is the convection force. All right, so also given by one standard equation, it is HT infinity. So if you see the word free stream temperature, then you will see um, uh, you will see that uh, you need to substitute the free stream temperature here. OK, um, OK, just uh, just now I say this one is temperature, right? So this is not temperature, it's a thickness. Uh, I apologize. So this is a, a thickness, small t is a thickness. Uh, temperature for chapter 7 is capital T. Yeah. So on, same with the uh, other sides. You just change the length based on the calculation of coordinate. Okay. Five, six, seven steps is still the same. You find the unknown uh, as required. Okay, let's look at one tutorial question. So after this tutorial question, um, you will know how to apply the six steps of uh, two-dimensional analysis. Okay, so if you can see on the screen here, okay, let me see who mic is on. Eh? Okay, let me mute uh, Katana your mic. Eh? Okay, good. All right, so if you look at the screen here, you have a two-dimensional body. So, uh, okay, so how do you know you need to use a uh, one-dimensional uh, FEA analysis of two-dimensional? So usually in the question itself, uh, in the statement, so you will see 
which what, which equation you need to use. So for example, this tutorial question, you see that uh, you are having a two-dimensional body, means that you need to start using the two-dimensional uh, FEA method for heat transfer. So you need to determine the temperature distribution and the temperature on the left hand side is 100 degrees C on the left and it was insulated at both sides. Um, and then the heat convection, which is the H, the H the dimension, uh, convection on the right, height, uh, right side is given, H is given. Free stream temperature, which is infinity, uh, 50 degrees C. Coefficient of thermal conductivity, which is given, Kxs and Kyy is given. All right. So if you look at the question itself, you know that uh, if you're seeing Kxs, Kyy means uh, there are only like two to three equations to use only that, that, that link up with the Kx and the Kyy. So make sure you're familiar with the equation. Then all the dimension is even, two meter times two meter uh, uh, dimension. Thickness is one meter just for a uh, convenient. All right. Of course, in when you come to exam, you won't have one and one meter. Lah. Okay, so how do we apply the seven steps or six steps or uh, seven steps that we learn? So again, the first the first step is you do the meshing, you do the discretization process, or you break the element into uh, as simple as possible. So in this case, we break into four triangular. Again, for for this morning's uh, lecture, we are looking at very fundamental shape with this triangular. So we break. We are using triangular shape to build the complete uh, rectangular shape or square shape in this case, right? So we break the square uh, two meter times two meter shape into four triangular shape, as you can see on your screen. So you are having four element, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and then you label the node after you uh, cut the element into four. A triangular pizza shape, right? Then you label the element one, two, three, four. Okay, you not necessarily uh, label in this form, but I will I will recommend you to to write in the maybe in the uh, anti-clockwise direction. Okay, so this is a textbook uh, standard uh, example. So after that, you you lay after you label element, you label the node or the point. One, two, three, four. Yeah, this one is more correct because you see the point is in the anticlockwise. So again, uh, when you mark the point, um, if you convert from the question diagram into a, a mesh diagram, then you need to label the point. So this also will carry some marks. Okay, so make sure you when you label the nodes, you label anticlockwise. So one, two, three, four in anticlockwise and then don't forget there is a one point in the middle point number five and then you put in the dimension two two because this one will help you uh, will help you to uh, to mark the coordinate later because in later you need to find a certain parameter with coordinate and if you look at the point number five okay so point number five if you are wanting to say the coordinate are you able to to tell me the coordinate of point number five. So I just give you a, a, a start up. So point one, if you look at the axis here, point one is the origin, so it is zero, zero. Point two is uh, two comma zero, the x, y coordinate. So point five will be in the middle of the square. So it will be one comma one. Okay, so 1, 1 and same with uh, 3 and 4. Okay, so because the four element is in the shape, same shape, we only need to calculate 1 and then we pick up, no, not 1, uh, but we start with the 1 and then we, we, we uh, apply the same steps for element 2, 3 and 4. So we start with the first one. So element 1, okay, after you convert the uh, diagram from the question, convert into uh, you mesh the the object means you discretize it. You you break into a small pieces of tri uh, triangular. 
next step is that you analyze element one. Then you write the coordinate of all the points you have. And remember, we are looking at anti clockwise direction point. So we look at point one, point two, and point three in anti clockwise direction. Point one, point two, and point three in anti clockwise direction. You write the, their coordinate out 0, 0 for first point. Point 2 is here, 2, comma 0. Uh, point 3 is 1, 1. Okay. So I recall back, uh, this is in the previous chapter. So recall back all this uh, information for your alpha, beta, and gamma. So these are the nine equations that I mentioned just now. So you need to find alpha i, alpha j, alpha m. Alpha i is referring to x, j, y, m, means you take the coordinate of the second point, if you look at this diagram. So first point i, second point j, third point is m. So you look at the first, if you want to calculate alpha i, you take the x coordinate number for the point j, which is the second point, x here, times the y, coordinate of your M point here, minus YJ XM. So you apply the same for other nine, uh, other eight equation. Total you have nine equation here. And it is standard already here. Yeah? All these are standard, you just follow based on this diagram. And this diagram is uh, anticlockwise node, huh? anticlockwise uh, point, I, J, and M. So we just follow uh, accordingly. So this is just a recap how you apply the equation. So in this case, because we are interested only in beta and uh, uh, gamma, so we, you need to only calculate the beta and gamma. So for example, I already uh, give you the numbers on the screen here. So for example, I, beta I means the first point. So the first point is point one. So you just substitute your I as one and then yj, yj means is the second point, y coordinate of the second point with is a zero, okay, minus ym, m is your third point, which is, you look at the third point, y coordinate, which is one. So you, you just apply the standard, standard equation, yj minus ym, so you look at the coordinate that you write on your answer sheet, so zero minus one. You do the calculation, simple calculation equal to minus one. You apply the same for the, the next five points. Beta two, beta five, gamma one, gamma two, gamma five. So this is the, the basic steps. Okay, again, uh, first you convert the diagram from the question into small pieces of triangular, or we, or we call it meshing. So after you mesh the, the body, you start analyzing the element by element. So first element, we go first element, write the coordinate of your three point in anti-clockwise direction, yeah? anti-clockwise direction, and then you call back these slides. You call back these slides, you calculate for beta and gamma based on the coordinate you get six number there. Minus one, one, zero, minus one, minus one, two. Get this number. Then the next one is the area. A thickness is one meter, so you just write in your answer sheet, T equal to one meter. Area, this is a very simple triangular. So area triangular, half times the base times the height. So half, base is two, height is one meter. So the answer for uh, element one, the area for element one is one meter square. Again, uh, this is just a pictorial question. In final exam, it won't be this straightforward. Okay, you need to be ready for all the weird number when you come to exam. Any question for these slides before we move on? Yes, uh, okay, I've understood this slide, but could you go back to the previous slide a little bit? This one, the black color one. Uh? Yeah, where we have alpha. This one. Uh? This yes, one? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I just forgot uh, the reason to why you said we are focusing on the beta and gamma and not alpha. Okay. So oh, you don't understand why we don't need to use alpha, is it? Yes. Okay. 
because you see all this all this uh, formula right all this formula on the for second dimension are you seeing <laughs> beta here we only need yeah. beta and delta so beta it means all the all the this one uh, you only need this one beta and gamma in the equation for uh, for the k constant uh, matrix Oh, I see. Yeah, that's why you don't need to calculate for alpha. But it's good you, you stand by the alpha value. Uh, just in case. Lah. Okay, but for if you need to do two dimensional final element analysis, you don't need, unless you need to find the temperature later on, uh, then you need to find. For example, you need to find the temperature distribution. You need to use this equation. Capital T matrix equal to N times the T. Uh, then you need to find already. Because Ni equal to 1 over 2 A alpha I, uh, then you need to find the alpha. You see it now, Katana? Yes. yes. Okay, good. Let's back to our tutorial. Okay, so uh, move on. Eh? So stop me uh, if you're not able to understand. Huh? Okay, very good. So once you find your area, you want to find your beta and gamma, using the standard equation, thickness you have, you just apply all the standard equation uh, from step one to step seven. For example, the next unknown you need to find, normally will be mentioned or request in the exam. Let's say the section A will ask you to calculate the uh, stiffness matrix for conduction. Uh, then straight away you use this K sub C means conduction equal to T A B transpose D B. Uh, then you just apply now what you just calculate. So what is your B? Recall what is your B? Your B matrix is 1 over 2A, beta I, beta J, beta M, gamma I, gamma J, gamma M, standard. You did have all the six numbers, substitute inside there, substitute back to this general equation. D also standard, D matrix equal to KXX, 0, 0, KYY, also substitute back to here. Right. Although it looks a bit lengthy equation, but you already have the tools. I did give you a tools. So make full use of the tools. So this is the example, the step that I expected from, from you. So for example, if you're analyzing the element one, make sure in your answer right clearly. So if, if, you, if you can see on the screen here, K super script, I write a one there. It, re, it, it remind the the markers that you are focusing on element one. Sub C means you are looking at the conduction dimension. So K one C means you look at element one and then you sub all the numbers you calculate just now. For example, T is one, A is one, and then the beta transpose, you write back here like this one, transpose the matrix, D is this one, substitute back, KX is KYY given, 25, 25. Beta is this one, so you substitute back here. Okay, so one, uh, T and A was not here because it's one. So this one is half, half is for, one is for beta, I pull that out. One is for the, uh, you have two beta. One is transpose beta, one is the normal beta. Okay, normal B. Huh? So that's why you see a two half here and you do not see the one one. Uh, the thickness is one, area is one. So that's why it's not inside the calculation. But in your exam, it's good to write them out. Right? Okay, then you calculate. Based, you transform the, the, the middle equation here by using the tools that I give you. You just press and then you copy the answer from the website. Okay, then you write the answer. Kc is in the unit of watt over Celsius. It's the constant uh, conductivity, constant value. So it's a watt over Celsius. And uh, like other metrics that we learned in the previous chapter, each of the number inside matrix, it represents something. It represents a node location. It's like a parking lot in a multi-story building. So for example, the first column re referring to the first node. Here I write one. Second one is two. That one is five here. Okay, so we, we actually we are just apply the principle that we want to learn. 
now we only change it to uh, heat transfer uh, application. Okay, just I need to stress on this one. Uh, be careful that all these number inside matrix, there is a, it, it means something. It means the location. Okay, because later you need to, you need to superimpose into a big matrix later on, because you have all these elements. You need to combine all these four elements together. Now we only look at element one. Okay, you have the first stiffness matrix. Uh, 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 yeah, KC conductivity stiffness matrix for conduction. You already get the first one already. So up to here, normally you will score about five to seven marks up to this stage. All right, one question is twenty-five marks. So up to this stage, you already score about seven to eight marks. Huh? All right, then you continue. You have done with the element one. You continue the same steps like element one. So element two, again, you write the coordinates. So element two is here. Element two is here, sorry. Element two is here. So again, when you look at element, we will look at anti-clockwise node. So anti-clockwise means you start from one, followed by five, followed by four. So as you can see on the screen, not one, not five, and not four. Don't confuse, huh? don't switch them, uh, suka suka, uh, switch them all. Don't, don't confuse with the direction. And then you, you, you continue finding the beta gamma value accordingly. So it will be different. So for example, beta i is the first point here. So it asks you to use the y of the second point. Y second point is one. Uh, here, one minus the third point y coordinate m. So third point y coordinate is two. So one minus two get minus one. Apply the same for the other five. Okay. Then again, you see, uh, you, you you use back the uh, k matrix equation. Thickness times area times the b transpose times the d matrix times the b matrix. Apply the same. Repeat the same process. You'll get your K conductivity. Again, label your answer clearly. We are analyzing element two. So write K superscript two subscript C means you uh, looking at conductivity matrix for element two. And then to help yourself, please write something above the matrix that represent the node, the location, the parking, the parking space that you have. So for example, for element two, you are analyzing in anti-clockwise direction, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.4, so above the column, write 1, 5, 4, just to remind yourself. Because later when you mix them together, uh, you superimpose this, all these metrics together, you need to park them according to their location. Okay, this is the reason why uh, I always remind you to write something. Yeah? on the matrix. Okay, same with the element three, you apply the same. Yeah, you get the third matrix, KC3. Uh, okay, then you get. So uh, for element three, again, we start with element four. Element four, followed by element five, followed by element three. Okay. Uh, it's not necessary you start with four, you can start with three. Three, but you have to be anti-clockwise direction. Three, four, five. Or if you want to start with 0.5, also can. But it must be in anti-clockwise. Five, three, four. In this tutorial question, I start with 0.4, followed by 0.5, followed by 0.3. So that's why here I make a notation here. Okay. 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 uh, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0.3. Okay, once, and then repeat lah, element 4, because we have a four element here. So again, 0 0.4, you are having, you are looking at 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. You always anti-clockwise direction. 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. Again, it's not limited to only you need to start. You must start at 0 0.2, no ah. Uh, you can choose any point, but it must be in the anti-clockwise. In my example, I start with 0.2. In your answer, you might start with 0.3 or you might start with 0.5, but it must be anticlockwise. Then you get uh, some number inside the matrix. After that, you combine. 
Okay, all right. Just a side note. So uh, when you analyze problem, you need to be careful if you have a convection distribution. So, so for example, this case, element four is a leak. There's a heat leak up from element four. So you need to uh, re remind yourself to call back this equation. K sub H is a convection uh, contribution. Uh, H L I minus J T divided by six, two one one two zero zero zero. This one is a uh, standard already, right? So why we need to use this one? Because you look back at the question, there's one uh, here. So the H is leaked somewhere uh, inside from the element four at the side of two, three at the side of here. So you want to apply, you apply the equation. So for example, the H here, the H, H is the, the convection constant given in the question. L of the side that leak the heat out is two. So you are leaking from 0.2 to 0.3 uh, H here. So that's why you substitute two here. Uh, T thickness is one, so substitute one. And then you calculate this matrix. So you get this one. Again, be careful on the parking lot nah, of your matrix. Eh? So your, your convection matrix also have its own parking lot. Nah, so be careful. Eh? If you, you must be consistent with your previous calculation. So this one, if your conductivity, you take 0.2 in anti-clockwise. So 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, it must follow. Uh, means the, your, your convection coordinate is following what you calculate. So it's uh, 235. 235, you get this all this number. Okay. So you combine these two, means element four, you have two metrics, uh, two, two different metrics here. You combine them together because all both of them have the same parking lot and building. So two combine two, three combine three, five combine th uh, five combine five. So you just add, this is the matrix addition. Eh? It's very direct. Even you forget how to do matrix addition, there's a tools I already tell you. So in the website alone, there's a button for you to click. Okay. Just click the matrix, right? But you have to key in uh, when you when you key in, be careful. Uh. Don't key in the wrong one. Always check the number when you key in. Uh. Even you use a, a calculator, you need to be careful on the numbers that you press. So you combine these two effect, conduction and convection for element four. You get one matrix that, uh, con that focus on 0.235. So currently we have four matrix. Uh. Four matrix, you combine them together like what you did. I think you already expert in combining all the matrix already. So this is just a textbook reference answer. Make sure you go home and uh, practice on this. Uh, when it says your homework. Uh. So you get one superimposed uh, matrix. I change it from small k to capital K. It means you already complete the superimposed process. You get all these uh, five times five because you have five point, right? So column one means point one, column two, point two, column three means point three, column four means uh, point four, column five means point five. You need to arrange according to one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So if you look carefully in the question, if the question, uh, Mention there's no Q, there's no Q naught, uh, means there is no heat, tra uh, heat transfer. There's no heat transfer. Uh, one is the no heat transfer in the term of volume. There's no heat transfer in the term of area. Then we only have one convection at uh, site two, three here. So in all the equation, we only choose one equation that contribute. It is the convection only. So that's why we choose. Uh, uh, force at the element four that contribute to the forces in in the unit of what? So you write h h t infinity l two minus three, which is this is the side that contribute to the convection. So you are only focusing on the length of the convection. 
times the T thickness divided by 2110. Okay, so I do the, I show you the, the detail steps. H given, this is a convection constant, 20 given, temperature given, uh, 50 degrees C, uh, which is here, if you look at the diagram, in the question diagram. So T infinity, 50 degrees C, of course, uh, this is a tutorial question. In exam, we won't be that generous. Uh, so uh, you need to find in the statement, question statement. So normally you will see the word free stream temperature. So it's uh, referring to T infinity. Okay. So in this case, 50 degrees C. L, length of the site that you're focusing on, which is uh, 0 0.2 to 0 0.3, which is 2 meter. So substitute 2. Thickness is one given. So you calculate, you will get uh, force at element four will be thousand, thousand zero. So what does all these three mean? It means this one referring to point two, this one referring to point three, this one referring to point five, because we are analyzing based on point two first, followed by point three, followed by point five. So this one refer to point two, refer to point three, this one to point five. Okay. Then after that, after you have the element forces, then you call back lah, F equal to KD. But of course, in chapter seven, you get you talk about heat transfer. The displacement you have here is the temperature distribution. So F equal to KT temperature. Okay. So you write lah, the, the matrix accordingly. So for the force, uh, you have F1, 1000, 1000, uh, F4, 0, the K matrix you already superimposed, and the T temperature that you have. Okay, so point 0.1, you don't know the, the force, so you just write F1. F2, you just you already find, because F2, just now in the uh, point 0.2 element, you already find point 0.2 is 1000, point 0.3 is 1000, and then uh, point 0.5 is 0. So that's why here you see 1000 here. F4, you don't know, so you write F4 there. F5 in the middle, you already find in the previous calculation is zero. Okay, so you only have uh, five unknown on the right hand side, two unknown on the right hand side, you have seven unknown. So you can reduce this matrix by using boundary condition. Okay, it will be the same approach like the tutorial question uh, in the previous lecture. You use the boundary condition to further simplify. Where in this case, we are given two boundary conditions, which is further reduce the matrix in the more simpler form. So in this case, you have uh, two temperature given. One is on the left hand side, which is T1, which is temperature at 0.1 and 0.4 because these surfaces are shared together. So temperature at 0.1 is 100 degrees C, 0.4 is 100 degrees C. So 0.1 and 0.4, 100 degrees C. You substitute inside the matrix here. You rearrange the equation. You'll get something like this. So the, the detailed step I already show you in the previous uh, session. All right, so if you don't know how to transfer from the uh, equation on the top of these slides to the bottom one, refer back uh, or treat it as your homework. As you can see, something happened to the matrix. Um, this one become 100. This one become 1. The rest is 0 because you have a boundary condition there, 100 degrees C. 0.4 also same. 0.4 is all zero except this one is one, zero, zero, and then it will affect uh, one of the, a few more numbers here. So we just uh, uh, practice on it. How you transfer the top one to bottom one by applying the boundary condition, okay? So once you, you know how to convert the top one to bottom one, okay? Um, okay, the trick, uh, just to recall how you convert, uh, just in case uh, some of you forget. In the matrix here, you have five equation. You just write out the five equation. So for example, the first equation, F1 equal to 25 T 
0, T2, 0, T3, 0, T4, minus 25, T5. This is the first equation. You develop five, four more equations from this matrix. After that, you substitute the boundary condition inside the five equation that you see. Then you're able to build this equation, uh, this matrix, because this matrix actually is the five equation that you just substitute just now. You write back in the matrix form. Okay. Now this is the matrix that give you five equation, five unknown. You're able to solve. Huh? So you only have one column of unknown. By using the tools, matrix tools, you inverse this matrix, time this matrix, you get all the four uh, temperature you have. Normally T1, because you already, if you do it properly, T1 you'll get 100, T4 you'll get 100, you only need to find uh, T2, T3, T5. Okay, you'll get all this number. T1, 100. T400, T2, 69, T3, 69, uh, T584. For this module, maximum decimal place, three decimal place, minimum two decimal place. Huh? Okay. okay. So we have done with this example, how you apply um, the two dimensional analysis. There's one more tutorial question. So you can go ahead and look at the steps that I have covered in the tutorial question. All right. Same steps, we just that repeating what we learned just now. Go ahead and uh, have a look into this. Huh? So we will go, go for, uh, um, we'll go for 10 minutes breaks. Huh? 10 minutes breaks, we will come back 9, 10. So let me stop the recording.